guys and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be sharing with you some easy and delicious crock pot meals. I've got some frozen boneless skinless chicken breasts, some russet potatoes, chicken broth, oil, and some seasonings. I've got a garlic and herb seasoning from Costco as well as Italian seasoning. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to scrub my potatoes with a little scrub brush to make sure I get all the dirt off and then cut out any bad spots that might be in there. Now I usually like to buy the little mini Yukon Gold and red potatoes, but I didn't have any of those so I just have these russet potatoes. Now I'm going to place my boneless skinless chicken breast on the bottom of the crock pot. You can use thawed or frozen, you'll just have to adjust your cooking time, but I'm using frozen. Go ahead and chop up your potatoes into large chunks. I'm chopping mine into about one and a half to two inch pieces. Drizzle your potatoes with some oil. I have avocado oil here, but you can really use whatever you'd like. If you skip this step, then your potatoes will turn brown in your crock pot. I'm gonna add about one cup of chicken broth into my crock pot. Now you can use just regular water, but I think chicken broth gives it a little bit better flavor. I have this chicken bouillon base that I just put one teaspoon into one cup of water. And I just mix that and pour that over my chicken. Go ahead and add all of your potatoes on top of your chicken. I'm using this garlic and herb seasoning that I got from Costco. It is really good. It already has salt in it has a lot of really good seasoning, so I'm gonna liberally sprinkle that over, as well as this Italian seasoning for some extra flavor. Give that a quick stir, and I actually should have put the seasoning on top of the chicken first, and then put the potatoes on, so I'm gonna move the potatoes around and just put a little bit of seasoning right on top of the chicken. Going to want to cook this on high for about four hours or until the chicken is done and the potatoes are tender. This is really an easy, almost all-in-one dinner minus the veggies. Potatoes are nice and tender and the chicken is very tender and not dry. I really like this meal cooked better in the Instant Pot, which I have a video coming with that shortly, but if you only have a slow cooker, give it a try. It's super easy. Here it is, I'll put it up, and I have some roasted Brussels sprouts that I served with it. This next recipe is for a white chicken chili, and it is absolutely delicious. You can use canned beans, or you can use dried beans. I bought some dried beans, and I cooked them up in my Instapot, had them in the freezer, and now they're thawed and ready to go. If your beans are already cooked, then you'll need four and a half cups of chicken broth. This is my homemade chicken broth, and I only have two cups, so I'm gonna add two more cups of water to that. And then I like to use this Better Than Bouillon Chicken Base from Costco, so I'm gonna use two teaspoons of this for my two cups of water that I added. If you're starting out with dry beans, then you're gonna to wanna to use seven and a half cups of chicken broth. If you're using canned beans, then you'll need four cans of Great Northern Beans that have been drained and rinsed. If you're using dried beans, then you'll want to use one pound of beans, soak them for about eight hours, and then rinse them off. Next, add about four cups of chicken that's been cooked and chopped up. I never really measure, I just kind of use whatever I have. I like to periodically cook up a whole chicken, and then I pick the meat off the bones and freeze it in portions to use for soups and stuff. That way I get some of the light meat and some of the dark meat. Then add one medium chopped onion. If it's a large onion, then I just do half. Two teaspoons or about four cloves of minced garlic. And then two ounces of diced green chilies. The smallest I've seen is four ounces. So what I do is I just open the jar up and I take out half and I'll freeze the other half for when I make this again. So I had some in the freezer, so instead of opening this can, I'm just gonna dump that in. Then you're gonna add one and a half teaspoons of dried oregano. one teaspoon of dried cilantro, and a half a teaspoon of cumin. And then you can also add salt and pepper to your liking. If you're doing dried beans, you're gonna definitely wanna add a lot more salt. 
Give it a good stir and then cook it on high for about four hours. If you're using dried beans, you're gonna to wanna to cook it on high for about six hours just to make sure the beans are thoroughly cooked. I love serving this up with some crusty French bread or some delicious cornbread. Next, we're going to be making some Swedish meatballs and I'm gonna start out by making my own homemade meatballs. The recipe calls for one pound of ground beef and one pound of ground pork. I only had ground beef on hand, so that's what I'm using. I'm sure it would taste really good with the pork in there, but I only have ground beef. To the meat, you're gonna add half of an onion, very finely chopped, or you can use your food processor and chop it up really finely. I didn't think it was worth it to get that out, so I'm just chopping it up as finely as I can. Next, add one egg, and then for the seasoning, add one tablespoon of minced garlic, one tablespoon of Italian seasoning, one teaspoon of salt, and a quarter teaspoon of pepper. Then you're gonna to wanna to mix that until it's all fully incorporated. I find it's easiest to use two forks to do this. You can use your hands, I don't like to do that, but two forks is my favorite method for mixing meat. To form my meatballs, I like to use this cookie scoop and just scoop it up. So I'm gonna go through and do that with all of them. And then once I'm done, I'm gonna take my hands and just round them out just to kind of make them a little bit more uniformly shaped. Bake in a preheated 350 degree oven for 15 to 20 minutes until they're finished. You can use a thermometer to check the internal temperature to 160 if you'd like. Now if you're cooking these on a baking sheet, you can do that on par parchment paper. That way it won't be such a mess to clean up, but I'm just using my Pyrex glass pans and it works perfect. Once they've been cooled, you can put them in a Ziploc bag and place them in the freezer until you're ready to use it for your recipe. Okay, now moving on to our recipe. I had my meatballs in the freezer, so I have taken them out. I am using them frozen. You don't have to thaw them first for this recipe. I've got a lot of stuff here from the freezer that I took out to thaw for this recipe. I will link the recipe down below so you can see the exact measurements and everything. Start by placing your meatballs in the bottom of your crock pot. Now you can definitely use store-bought meatballs for this recipe. I just wanted to try making the homemade ones because this recipe had gluten-free meatballs. So now we're gonna start making our gravy or sauce here in this bowl. I have some beef broth here that was frozen. It's not fully thawed, so I'm just gonna make the sauce with what I have on hand. So I have one and a half cups of beef broth. To that, add half a cup of half and half, or if you're dairy-free like me, just a half a cup of coconut cream. I like to freeze my canned coconut once I open it up into half cup portions for all my recipes. This here was pretty much thawed, so I'm just gonna go ahead and add that. Then you'll add one tablespoon of cornstarch, one tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce, I have no idea how you say that. I did not have any on hand, so I just have some of this coconut amino, so I'm gonna use one tablespoon of that one teaspoon of minced garlic, one teaspoon of dried parsley, half a teaspoon of salt, quarter teaspoon of thyme, and a quarter teaspoon of pepper, and just a pinch of nutmeg. Give that a good whisk together and then pour that over the meatballs in your crock pot. Then I'm gonna add the rest of my beef broth that's still slightly frozen and give that all a quick stir together. You're gonna to wanna to cook this on high for maybe about two to three hours or on low for four or five hours, just until everything is all heated thoroughly and the sauce has thickened. 
My sauce didn't thicken too much, so I think next time I might double the amount of cornstarch. It was still absolutely delicious. So we served this up on top of mashed potatoes that I cooked in my Instant Pot, and it was an absolutely delicious meal that I will definitely be making again. This last recipe I have for you guys is a chocolate lava cake, and I did not know until recently that you can make dessert in your crock pot. This is a great recipe to use during the summer when you don't want to heat up your oven and you just want to throw something in your crock pot for dessert and forget about it. So let's go ahead and jump right in and get started. In a bowl, add one cup of flour. I just have some freshly ground whole wheat flour. And then the recipe called for one cup of sugar, which I thought was a lot, so I tried cutting back to half a cup. It wasn't quite sweet enough, it was pretty salty. So I think next time I'm gonna try three quarters cup of sugar. And then you're gonna add three tablespoons of cocoa powder, two teaspoons of baking powder, and a half a teaspoon of salt. Give that a quick whisk till it's all fully incorporated and then set that aside and we'll start in on our liquid ingredients. In a separate bowl, mix half a cup of milk. I'm just using some homemade almond milk. Two tablespoons of butter. I'm using earth balanced, soy free, non-dairy spread. I think next time I'm just gonna use oil because it was a lot of work to get that melted. And then also you're going to put in a half a teaspoon of Give that a quick whisk and then pour over your dry ingredients and start mixing that together. This ended up being pretty dry and wasn't really mixing very well, so I added just a little bit more milk, maybe a couple tablespoons more, and that turned out to be perfect. You're going to want to make sure you spray your crock pot really good with non-stick cooking spray. Then go ahead and pour your batter right into your crock pot and spread it out evenly. The batter will be pretty thick, like a brownie batter consistency, so you don't want to add too much milk to make it too runny, but you want it to be like a brownie-like batter. Then sprinkle about a cup of chocolate chips on top. I'm using Enjoy Life dark chocolate chips. And I didn't quite have a cup, as you can see, because I like to snack on them. I think next time I may leave them out because they just kind of melted into the cake. Maybe it would have helped if I actually had a full cup's worth. I don't know, we'll try again next time and see what happens. Last, we're gonna make the chocolate sauce, and for some reason I did not record this, but I heated up one and three quarters cup of hot water, I added three tablespoons of cocoa powder, and then the recipe called for a three quarters cup of sugar. I just did a half a cup of sugar and that seemed to be plenty. So once that's all dissolved in there, you're going to pour that over the top of your batter. So then just put your lid on and cook on high for two hours. You wanna make sure that you keep an eye on it so the edges don't burn. And then after two hours, you're going to turn it on low for another two hours. This actually ended up cooking quicker than I thought. So I think I only had it on low for about an hour and we weren't quite ready to eat it because we had other stuff that we were doing. And so I just turned it off so that way it could cool slightly until we were ready to eat it. And as you can see, that chocolate sauce that we poured on the top kind of turned into a pudding down on the bottom. It was really delicious. Don't forget to top this with your favorite ice cream. I just have some coconut ice cream that I got from Sprouts. It was absolutely delicious. I still wanna try some other recipes and kind of tweak it around a little bit. But this was delicious. I want you guys to try this recipe out and let me know what you think of it and if you like it. This was actually my birthday dessert. It was a really fun treat, really fun experiment to make this in the crock pot. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and found some new recipe ideas. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching and I will see you guys next time.